what would be the highlights for you? Obviously, you had that year as captain, but you know that didn't work out. You were injured for most of it. But what would be the highlights? Oh, I think it's like the there's loads of highlights. So I think um, just initially in your first first maybe year and, and and year one and year two is just like that uh, initial reality setting in that you you're playing professionally and you and you're playing regularly in the first team. I think like year, year and I think even in that year two I got the chance to captain the side. So that was that was a real special moment and then. Even like I had a disappointing year when I, when I had the captaincy with with an injury and things like that. It's still, it's still a massive honour to be able to do that, and I've been lucky enough to captain the, the side a few times over the years. But yeah, like big games in the Premiership, Friday nights at King's Home, they're the ones always stick in your mind. Um, winning the Challenge Cup, all, all bits like that are just real fun memories. And then I've had the chance to meet and play with some amazing people in this squad over my time here. So yeah, a lot, a lot of fun memories. And not bad for a lad who was playing for Hartbury and looked over and saw Gloucester training and thought, well, I wouldn't mind having some of that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it seems it seems a long time ago now, but yeah, I was I was lucky enough to be presented with an opportunity, and um, yeah, it just shows that it's really worked out. I put the effort in back then, and it's it's paid off in dividends now. Yeah, how important is it almost for you as as a beacon who wasn't part of the Gloucester Academy to actually show that if you're not part of a Premiership Academy, there is still a way to the top in the game. Yeah, definitely. I think you see really nice examples of it of all the time now. Like Jake Pledries has gone through a different route. I see you see other guys at other clubs that have um, might not have had the fortune of being in like a, an age group set up or an academy growing up, and they might get spotted or take an opportunity that, that's given to them. And um, yeah, I think you see those guys that probably that will be the hungriest in the squads, and, and, and they take it with both hands. And they're real success stories, aren't they? So no, I think it's really good that that you see still see guys coming through like that now. And the future, Japan. Why Japan, first of all? Um, yeah, it was something that I hadn't even hadn't even considered until almost an opportunity to go there was presented to me, and then it went from being just an idea to just it sort of snowballed and gained a lot of momentum. And um, yeah, it's just uh, I wanted to take an opportunity that was given to me rather than regret not taking it, if that makes sense. And um, yeah, it's it's a couple of years over there, and I'm really looking forward to the challenge of that. Um, had had a stay at Gloucester, it might have been, it would have been a good a good thing. But I just thought I never wanted to regret not looking back on my career, which can be a short career. Um, that it didn't take an opportunity that was given to me to go and explore something new, and I felt strongly that at this this time that it was kind of like stay at Gloucester or go and explore something that was almost like a bit of a curveball in a sense. But you're still young enough that this isn't a last payday, is it? You know, you're not just going out there for, you know a few yen to finish off your career no certainly not um, the team I'm joining are, are hungry for success they've been historically they've been one of the one of the strongest sides over in Japan if not the strongest so yeah I'm looking over to going we're going into joining a really competitive squad and yeah looking to obviously be, have a successful time over there but obviously I, at the moment I can't look beyond those two years and, and who knows what the future holds um, in terms of yeah playing career Looking forward to the humidity. I mean, obviously you you've played under Johan, so you, you know what a Southern Hemisphere style of games like. But the Japanese do play at a frantic pace, don't they? Yeah, having I've, I've watched a couple of games and things like that, and it and it certainly it certainly is um, is high tempo and stuff like that. But hopefully, with the way that like you've mentioned before, we, we, we like to, we back ourselves on um, on throwing the ball around as, as as much as anyone. So hopefully, I'll be set up for that. And I think the only thing that holds the Premiership back from playing more. That style of that style of play is weather conditions come the winter, but um, yeah, over there in the in the warm conditions, you might be the ball might be slippy more from from sweat than it would be from from adverse weather conditions. But no, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to the challenge going and playing out there. Yeah, and learning the lingo. Are you taking lessons? Are you listening to tapes already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had um, the club set up. has got a couple of translators and a, and, and a teacher there. But yeah, me and my wife have um, taken it upon ourselves to have a few lessons already just to give ourselves a bit of a head start on that front and uh, playing the, the Duolingo up every time we get a chance. So, um, yeah, giving it a go, I just thought, if you can get a head start on anything, it's just going to enhance your experience, isn't it, as, as going over there. And I certainly want to make the most of it.